Hey everyone, the point of this video is to show you how I use Figma to improve my YouTube thumbnails. I've left a link to that file in the description. Please enjoy. All right, so I'm only about five videos into this YouTube journey and I'm already a bit unhappy with how the thumbnails are turning out. Thumbnails are really important because it's the first way that users see your content. I wanna make that doorway or that window or the window display kind of concept. I wanna make that really nice and tight. All right, let's look at my current thumbnails. So here they are. You can already see a little bit of weirdness happening. Um, the, the type is a little bit too spaced out. I don't like that. It's a little bit small. And the first step that I would go through here is seeing how they stack up compared to others. On my big projector, the type was a lot smaller than the competing ones. Context is really everything when you're going to be sitting alongside other content. So this is my homepage for YouTube. I mainly want my videos to have a consistent look. So let's compare one of my videos to one of these other ones. To do this comparison, I'm going to screenshot one of mine, kind of drag it and stretch it just so I have the right proportions and it's a fair comparison. Using Figma, I'm just going to screenshot it. I'm going to come back here to this comparison analysis page, paste it in, press eight so that I get 80% opacity, stretch it down. All right, so can you see the type size difference? We're kind of looking at this here. This is my little secret tool. And it's gonna allow us to see in black and white and a little bit blurry. Looking at a screen like this, you can see the white standing out, the white here is standing out like crazy. You can see some big text would happen here. Ours is pretty tiny. This right here looks a little bit better for what uh, for what we want. All right, so as I'm building, I'm gonna use Figma because I'm able to make components, have some modularity to it. And also my established brand stuff is already all inside Figma. I'm also really comfortable in Figma. So there are two things I wanna consider when I'm building this thumbnail, maintaining my brand consistency with it, and also building in a modular way so that I can address thumbnails in the future. I'm already at five. I could easily double, triple, you know, maybe this goes on to a hundred videos. So I don't wanna be doing work like this over and over again. So this is my YouTube banner and I've got it here with my YouTube page on the right. And so something that I'm pulling from my brand is I have a series of colors and typography. All right, so what we've got here are my normal typography styles that I use for my webpage and my YouTube down here. This is the big banner. You can see in the background there how I have these cutting boards. That's kind of what I'm going for. I precision, but also work in progress. The type here is quite thin. I'm going to need it to be thicker for YouTube, but so I'm gonna go outside of my brand a little bit. That's okay, life moves on. What's fun about this process too is that I can make these changes and fix them. It's my, it's me, I don't care. Now for my brand, I'm super inspired with just clean type. This is the book. You've got to get it. Hope it's not backwards. Actually, I've never done this before, so I don't know. But I love just how that type sits on, sits in these grids. Beautiful, beautiful work. So that's what we're going to do. As if this is on paper or on some sort of intentional grid that uh, an artist might use to structure some of their work or, or do some layouts. That's the theme behind my thumbnails that I'm going to make for us, for all of us. If we look online, YouTube banners are 1280 by 727. Next, I wanna put in a paper style. I'm really inspired by what Figma did with their design system from back in the day, so let me pull that up real quick. Basically, it looks like paper, and it just shows a level of precision mixed with, hey, we're, we're crafting this up, we're building this up. This is not final work, but this is the, kind of the behind the scenes. That's the essence I want to portray with my thumbnails. So here's where you just start eyeballing a little bit, and I'm gonna do this with auto layout and rectangles. Shift X will turn this into outlines only. It takes this fill away and puts the stroke on it. The trick to a lot of this is centering your stroke. K is the scale tool. So if we scale this down now, the question kind of is, will users be able to see these lines? This is kind of what it's gonna look like. This is 100%. I'm on a 5K monitor. Even for myself, it's a little super tiny thin. Now this isn't product work. Pixels specifically aren't really mattering. It's more about the relationship of everything in comparison to the thumbnail size, as that thumbnail will be on mobile, it will be on big projector, it'll be on a big TV, it'll be on retina screens and non-retina screens. It's more about relationship of size. So the numbers here don't really quite matter. Since we're thinking modularly, I'm gonna set my first modular piece of this, which is the background grid. grid. I'm going to call this component. If I ever want to use these again, I can put them in here. And as I modify this, I then modify the, uh, the, uh. if I put this text on here, I'm going to make sure it's the height of some of these lines. So let's start by 
positioning it two lines off of the top just for some padding. So I'm gonna put it at the Y value of 60. I don't know the width just yet, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna get my line height. I'm gonna put it very specifically into pixels. So I want 30 times six. Okay, so boom, you see how it's stacked up exactly like that. Very weird, but let's just start messing around by making it a little bit fat. Okay, so now we've got 64. Oh, this, the text is 64 and it's sitting inside of line height of 60. So every two, 30, 30 is 60, 30, 30 is 60, 30, 30 is 60. If I go to outline mode, you'll see how these lines are really starting to make some sense. Still too tiny for me. And since I went 60 pixels off the top, I'm gonna do 60 pixels off the side and I want bigger text. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna add another plus 30 to this and I'm gonna bump this up again. I'm just starting to feel that I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go to 120 and I'm gonna go even higher to 128. This is starting to get crazy, but Let's do something crazy where we are going to make a component out of this so that I can stretch it down and put it on my competitive analysis basically and see how things are starting to starting to work. So I'm going to leave this one alone and work from a brand new guy down here. I'm gonna call him test one thumbnail. I'm gonna componentize him and I'm gonna bring him over using K tool. tool. Now it looks like these also are getting a corner radius, so I'm actually able to do that as well. Help, I am a new YouTuber. And this one is how a UX designer wastes your time. Another thing is what if I put in a graphic someday? someday? So maybe we're getting closer actually. Next I'm gonna try building modularly by putting the text as a component as well. I'm not sure if this will work well, but let's try it. Let's first, let's put it in a frame, option command G, or just put a frame around it. Let's come in and let's put it back in. Another one of the things I've been adding to my overall thumbnails has been a little bit of branding, which is my YouTube avatar head, and then a little icon that says, you know, this is a YouTube video. That's for other purposes as well. And I'll get into that. I'll get Here I'm maintaining all my outside boundaries and margins, of course, of course. I've got two right now, which is the one I'm eventually going to turn into maybe a greater component or maybe not, I'm not sure. And then I have my test. That's why you see me doing both. I forgot something. I wanted to make vertical lines as well to show just some more structure to the page. Alright, I think that's looking better. Sorry, I took a little break, had, had a conversation with someone, but I'm back now. And I wanna talk about why the modularity approach is so important. Maybe I should call it the modular approach to all of this. The multiple layers for this thumbnail that we're building. The reason is, is because I'm actually gonna have two outputs for this. One is gonna be the YouTube thumbnail. It's gonna to go to YouTube and it's gonna fit on all the YouTube pages. But the second one is for when I wanna reference this YouTube video or a YouTube video in another format, like inside of an Instagram story, Facebook post, or a LinkedIn post. And I want it to look like it's a actual video. I want it to represent an abstracted, but sort of real YouTube video. When I was getting my fine art degree, we really focused on the materials we used to convey our message. So when we were using paint to paint something, we would use thick paint to, to really push the fact that this is made of paint and this is a painting. In sculpture, if you made something out of wood, it was really impressed upon us that make it solid wood. Um, make it out of like raw cut wood so you could tell that it's wood. Don't paint over it so that it's a black box or a yellow box. It looks like a yellow box, it's not made of wood. The, then the wood doesn't matter, then you can make it out of styrofoam. What the, what the thing is should be what it is. It's hard to say, but I think it's best said about that one quote. You can tell, you can tell it's an Aspen because of the way it is. So when I'm making this representation of a YouTube video, there are some other elements about YouTube videos that I'm gonna include to, to really encapsulate the fact that this is a YouTube video. One would be, the time of the total video. And this helps encourage people to either watch or know what they're getting into when they see it. Another one is just a timeline. Often you see the YouTube video thumbnails with rounded corners. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this now. So we really got two here. We've got the thumbnail and we've got this YouTube representation. I've come in here and I've added 24 pixel rounded corners. This component of thumbnail is sitting inside of here. And to prove that again, I'll make a rectangle, I'll drop it in. Let's add the, a player bar that might sit on top of it. 
And another piece that I really want to do is this time. Okay, now that we've got a really structured way of making thumbnail for myself, I'm going to allow myself to have some freedom and fun with it. And so what you see here is I've got my thumbnail, but then this component, but it's sitting inside of these other ones, these other frames. Let's, let's rename these and call them thumbnail, I don't know what they're gonna be, but thumbnail number, right? So thumbnail number one, two, three, one, two, three. That makes a lot of sense, Noah. This allows me the freedom so that when I want to put in my graphic or something, I can put it like this. In this one, it might end up being three graphics. And over here, it might be something, I don't know, it might be something that kind of stacks like this, right? So I've got a set of rules that make a lot of sense. And I also have the kind of freedom to work around this thing. Another thing about the modularity here is that though this is a YouTube video for now, maybe this icon changes later, maybe the background changes to orange or something someday, and I'm able to say as an announcement. But it's still in the same family. I have a couple of elements now that I can mix and match and change, but it still is generally stays on brand. Okay, so like everything on this journey that I'm on right now, I'm trying to lay down foundational pieces that can grow, you know, exponentially in the future. And I have I have a, a system in, in under me that I can lean back on when I have to make more of it or you know, I have a question about how I should do things. So this reminds me of a quote from James Clear in Atomic Habits, which is, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And now we have a system. Mm -hmm.